The new South and North Pole Earth axis is 2,322.9 nautical miles from the former Earth Pole axis. Australia being easily observed has a new east-west line that is 42 degrees off the former. This means the northern hemisphere will heat up exponentially, endangering all life north of the new equator. The tilt of the Earth is another factor. It is now 18.6 degrees tilted towards the Sun. It was 23.4 degrees. This is based on observations from June the 24th, 2013. This is not to say it will remain on the axis. There are two factors, the new axis locations and the axis tilt. This is not the end of the movement of the Earth axis. There are factors affecting magnetic forces upon the Earth. The new planetary system returned after 3,600 years and as you should be aware of by now, the hype of an alien invasion by the world order is a smokescreen, they being the enemies of Christianity intending to kill us all, including the Muslims, have been aware of what I've been telling you for years, that the solar system has crossed the equator of the Milky Way galaxy. This occurred on December 11, 2013 at 11.11am 11 11 Eastern Australia time. We had cameras set up to observe the moon, and as predicted, the Coriolis effect of the galaxy overpowered that of the Earth. The moon flipped 180 degrees in one hour, then over the next hours slowly returned upright, then remained in an unstable attitude, wobbling each day. People around the world reported it was occurring, but as we all should be aware of by now, they counter through YouTube, Facebook and Twitter, being agents for the world order, remove hundreds of my videos and countless others put up by fellow truthers. So unless you've been on top of it and aware the world order is trying very hard to kill us, viruses H1N1, which we and others stop, the AIDS cure invented by the USA Health Department, pattern number 4647773, that should be the AIDS virus, which was invented by the USA, that's that pattern number. There's also a cure there that has a pattern number as well, but that's little known. The mass inoculations of the babies throughout the USA reports number over 60 inoculations by the age of two years. Chemtrails worldwide, so prevalent, we were stunned by the saturation of the skies over Europe. Just the cost of renting jets alone, the fuel and chemicals and the massive production facilities staggers the imagination. They block sky observations and poison you at the same time, very determined to hide the truth. This is just one of the reasons we left Australia to video for it ourselves. Pope Benedict was elected Pope in 2005. He, being a German, disqualifies him as being reliable by association with Hitler. Both men, incidentally, totally demonised by those behind the world order. Had Hitler won the war, we would all be in paradise. In fact, World War II is not over yet. The supposed victors rewrite history and have built an illusion so diabolical after it succeeded in starting World War I, and then two, arming Christian nations to kill each other. I have personally travelled through the USA twice, as well as Canada and Mexico, and what leaks out concerning the FEMA camps, guillotines, vast numbers of prison trains, chemtrails, vaccinations, and at the same time, the Christian churches are all dominated by Freemasonry, and its puppets of the same forces Hitler had attempted to rid the world of. Then came the world order death knell, a German named Ratzinger, demonised, held responsible for the abominations he desperately tried to rid from the Vatican. He, as Pope Benedict XVI, announced Christ is back, myself. He wrote an apostolic letter and made it public, a divine act of innocence, for he believed the good people in the church would rally behind him. Absolutely no chance. Which leaves you to the conclusion that there are no good people within the church. We haven't found one. Not a single one who is concerned well, about it. eleven countries, talk to people. Not one person gives a shit about Ratzinger. Yeah. Not one. No. Not even 
even near their toes. Mm -mm. They shrug it off. Go back to their gelato and pizza. <laughs> he told me he was unable to do what he wanted to do, stopped by the powers behind the fool Francis, and in prison in Castel Gandalfo under the orders coming from the Vatican. We had told Pope Benedict that we were coming to Rome, and Francis sent us messages saying if we, were, if we came, we would be arrested. Archbishop Georg Ganswein, as he has sworn to not listen to me or speak of me to Francis. Naturally, Lucifer is not an idiot from Argentina. It is the Archbishop Georg Ganswein. It has been argued that he is like a son to Benedict a long-time friend. However, that is how the devil works. I can tell you from personal experience, everyone in my family has stabbed and betrayed me, including my own children, wives and parents. So make no mistake, the entire world has been set up to be deluded by the world order to reject any second coming of Jesus as a man, as per Bible prophecy, and turn away to non-belief in creation, to the Darwinian insanity that all life evolved out of a rock, that the universe is billions of years old, and life saturating it, so the aliens have landed. That is the next step. So childish it staggers my mind. But the world is hypnotised by the idiot box and demons from the pulpit supporting Hitler's enemy as they attempt to start a nuclear war since 1950, I might add, and kill all life from the exchange via radiation fallout. My return is into hell where God is not, and when God comes as a man, the inmates must reject him. So I'm not perturbed by rejection, I welcome it. It is prophecy. The Lord, when he comes, will be rejected. Unlike Haley Selassie <laughs> and a few others out there, the dude in Siberia and, and AJ Miller. <laughs> The litmus test. <laughs> Rejection. In the next slide is the recent shift of the Earth axis. We observed it in England on June the 5th, 2013. That date, my grandfather's birthday in 1880. The conditions as of that date are shown. However, this does not mean this will be the same on any given date, as there are many factors causing the axis tilt. The crossing of the galaxy equator and the return of a small solar system which do have a form of life on the mirror image of the earth in angelic form. This is what terrifies the enemies of Hitler and like rats have burrowed underground in an attempt to avoid the many calculated scenarios their scientists have speculated as being the means for their end. They are that certain Jesus is back they have spent trillions to avoid their fate total and absolute annihilation. The planetary system has been observed for 60 years, prompting a vast project of tunnels connecting cities under the USA in particular, yet underground will become their tomb. This was the uh, new equator uh, of June 2013 we observed in England and since that time a wobble has uh, set up and uh, may continue to alter that equator but based on that particular information on that date uh, what we have then is a line running through uh, that red line and uh, you see Australia going past, you can see Antarctica. And if you'll notice, Australia is on a tilt of uh, 42 degrees and uh, making Tasmania and Melbourne very, very cold. And uh, North America would become very, very warm. North Africa. The safest place to be is that red line, providing the shift doesn't occur change or occur again and um, it may go back to normal but it would appear 
said that there's got to be five months for this uh, particular situation changes. Now, uh, our observations in Italy indicate that there is a wobble that um, makes the uh, rising and sitting in the approximate right positions, meaning that it is, the Earth is straightened up and then turned in another direction. So it's, it's very difficult to say what is precisely going to occur in the future. But what we do know is that uh, we have crossed the equator of the Milky Way galaxy, and on December the 11th, 2011, we observed the Moon flip upside down. Um, we have reports from our uh, dear friend in the Bahamas, uh, who incidentally has uh, used our protocol to cure his uncle of uh, Alzheimer's, and he has gone from a man that was unable to speak uh, to make recognition to sitting up and talking, making intelligent conversation. And um, he has uh, now accepted the fact that uh, God is back on the earth and uh, told his nephew how to cure him. Um, what we have then is uh, this red line running through. Now the blue line that you see there was the original North-South Pole by uh, Plotter from Australia. And then you'll see uh, another blue line, uh, a second one going straight up and down now. With Antarctica uh, clearly seen and the North Pole clearly seen. So the reason for that is that our observation at that time was uh, England. Just zoom in on England and I'll show you look like from our perspective. So we were here and uh, this is what we observed is the rotation and uh, draw that line there. So I'll go out follow that blue line. And that blue line is the uh, line that runs around to New Zealand, near New Zealand through Australia. There's New Zealand there, so we'll zoom in on that. Turn it around the right way as you recognize it. And uh, zoom in there. Now the distance between these latitudes from that point to that point is 888 miles, which is Jesus in Greek. New location is 942 miles uh, from that point. So the Australia would rotate around, and, uh, and that is the actual angle of Australia at the moment, or at that moment, I should say. Now, another factor that is that there's a planetary system come in and has influenced Antarctica, gigantic area here. So instead of being straight up and down, if you like, and around 23 point four degree angle, something like this, inclined towards the sun. During the summer period of North America, a distance of uh, 92 million miles on uh, July the uh, 4th. Now, huge weight on the bottom here appears to have been pulled by two forces approaching the planetary system here with a, a uh, companion dwarf sun to our sun. If it moves around, it'll pull Antarctica around like so. It could do all sorts of odd over a period of time, all sorts of odd changes to the Earth's 
bubble and axis. So we end up today with the equation as of uh, June 5th. Now, June the 5th was my grandfather's birthday. He was born in 1880. And uh, the difference in age between him and I is uh, two, three, two, two, nine days. 63.5 years. Now, the distance from the pole to the new axis point is the same number, but in nautical miles. That is uh, two, three, two, Rounded that to two three it was two three two two point nine miles. So I rounded it to uh, two three. So that is another indication of the divine nature of the uh, genetics, where we then take the same distance here to the North Pole, form a North Pole, and it's the same number two three two. Now the Bahamas, we mentioned before, um, our friend saw the moon flip upside down, but he didn't have a camera. But, and he asked me, has this happened before? Well, it has. It's happened uh, back in uh, 2011 when we actually have photographs and a, and a video of it occurring uh, at 11.11 a.m. on the 11th of December 2011. And um, it took one hour to flip upside down and then several hours for it to write itself, and it never has actually stopped the, the wobble that, that occurred. And uh, it will continue until probably another five or six months. Observation of the moon on the evening of the 23rd of June, which is what Yah was just saying then, 2013 from the Bahamas, saw the moon flipped upside down just as it did on December 11th, 20. That should be 2011 at 11.11 11 a.m. Australia time. On this date though, June 23rd, 2013, I was 36, 23 weeks old. The number is espousal in the Hebrew concordance. The base of the altar to the Lord, the Great Pyramid, has a baseline of 36,524.24 pyramid inches laid out on large cornerstones sunk into the bedrock. The blocks were then laid on a line 36238.14 inward, a perimeter smaller by 286.1 pyramid inches. And this number is also espousal. Solomon 3.11, go forth, O ye daughters of Zion, and behold King Solomon with the crown wherewith his mother crowned him in the day of his espousal and in the day of the gladness of his heart. Now, of course, Solomon, what he did on the day he was crowned was had his older brother Adoniah, who was the rightful king, murdered, fallen upon and murdered. So in the Hebrew Dictionary 2861 from 2859, a wedding, a spousal. Then Jeremiah 2.2, go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth, the love of thine espousals, when thou wentest after me in the wilderness, in a land that was not sown. Hebrew Dictionary 3623, bridehood only in the plural sense, espousal. Solomon was a black witch from his own mouth. The book of Solomon is not a biblical book when it should be. He relates how the various angels were commanded to do evil, but the head of the angels aided him in building Solomon's temple, destroyed centuries later by Nebuchadnezzar in 586 BC. Another temple was built by the descendants of the priests taken to Babylon as 17-year-old boys. Daniel, their god, was Yahweh. After Babylon fell to the Persians, King Cyrus decreed he would build their own temple. In 444 BC, Zerubbabel, 
came to Jerusalem and after approaching the Persians, the original scroll was found and in it the decree to build the temple for Yahweh. This was a thorn in the side of the Jews as their God is Lucifer. This is why they moved the Roman government to destroy it in 70 AD. We have Solomon, a black witch, his temple destroyed. Then the temple of Yahweh was built and then destroyed in 70 AD. Had it been the rebuilding of Solomon's temple, it would not have been destroyed in 70 AD. Solomon is the imagined father of the line of monsters down to Queen Elizabeth. The true line is via Judah, the offspring of Jesse, via David and his son Nathan. Descends to Margaret, Queen of England, her husband Malcolm III, King of Scotland, and their grandson, King William I, the Lion. His wife, Emmergard, their daughters Margaret and Margotta, who married into the martial line of Europe, and after she died, he married Isabel de Avenal, the mother of Henry Go Lightly. The wrestling within the womb of Rebecca, the wife of Isaac. Twins were within her womb. The firstborn was held back by Esau to be born first. Jacob held his heel. In a similar parable, a wrestling between twins, and it came to pass in the time of her travail that, behold, twins were in her womb. And it came to pass when she travailed that the one put out his hand and the midwife took and bound his hand a scarlet thread, saying, This came out first. And then later in the Bible there's other passages that refer to a similar birth. And it came to pass as he drew back his hand that, behold, his brother came out. And she said, How hast thou broken forth this breach be upon thee? Therefore his name was called Pharaoh's. And afterward came out his brother that had the scarlet thread upon his hand, and his name was called Zara. So there's two different births, centuries apart, but the same instance occurring. Twins. The same applies today. The Solomon occult, the false Jews who had occupied the temple and later from the same witchcraft, emerged the Knights Templars, they becoming the Freemason occult, waged war on their neighbours continually. Solomon married women of the descendants of Sodom, the Ammonite and Moabite. He received 666 talents of filthy lucre, talents of gold per annum. First Kings 10.14, quoting, Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was 603 score and six talents of gold. 2 Chronicles 9.13, Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was 603 score and six talents of gold. Because of this lust for war, the Templars pursuing their Talmud secret book of the Babylonian mystery religion waged war on the Muslims to be crushed by Saladin in 1184 in perhaps the intentional but if not the stupidest move marching from Jerusalem into the deserts without water. The men fell to the desert and Saladin then marched on Jerusalem. At that time, Jerusalem was ruled by Christianity, allowing all religions to worship in peace. This, however, was Christian and Christ. Therefore, the Lucifer-driven Talmud Templars wanted to destroy both their own army, many being Christian, and all of Jerusalem being Christian. If we look at the displacement factor of the Great Pyramid, its base reflects the Solomon 3623 espousal and the rejected 2861 number being the missing 144,000. And without these missing stones and their garment of Solomon, the capstone is too large to fit, as the height can only soar to the preordained average height of the earth land mass, being the height prior to the impact of Mars gliding with the earth thousands of years ago. The earth land mass was flat, no mountains. The impact ejected the molten magma forming the moon. This is why its surface chilled immediately and gases issued out of the interior to form huge, perfectly round craters with ridges 14,000 feet plus high and as much as 222 miles across. The day Ash and I observed the sun setting change direction from west to northeast, we were in England at Folkestone. That should be west to northwest. Yeah. Anyway. West to northwest, <laughs> so it moved eastward, moved backwards. In Folkestone on the south coast near Dover, we're observing the Methodist Church 
that had been constructed in the shape of the blood sacrifice altar. Its roof was a pyramid-shaped building aligned on the cardinal points, north, south, east, west. In front of it, a tower, the remains of a sacrifice congregation on a Sunday. The blame was laid on the German Luftwaffe. It was, in fact, a detonation by Churchill. He, a Talmud Jew, as the German pilots were Christians and never bombed churches. The area was, in fact, not a military target area. England has since 1649 been controlled by the Jewish bankers after they had Charles I beheaded as a deal to bring the money back into England. If you think World War II ended with the capitulation of Hitler, it was simply another step towards the total destruction of all Christians, followed by Muslims, and if failure is inevitable, then a nuclear war would kill all. The Alien Agenda card has been implemented, but getting it off the ground has been stymied by the sudden unexpected tilt of the earth. As said, we were in England observing this abomination, Methodist Church standing before it, the tower that remained after the sacrifice of the Christians in the church proper, simply called Christ. The date of our observation, June the 5th, 2013, the same date my grandfather, Francis Aloysius Galatly, was born in 1880. He was 2,322 days. Sorry, 3, 23,229 days old when I was born. And the new North Pole axis are 2322.9 nautical miles from the poles. It is these consistent occurrences the world order has to counter and is impossible. Shoot me. But no, they have tried 14 times. All they can do is panic. The tilt of the earth was 23.4 degrees and when it is summer in Europe and North America... The distance to the sun was over 94.2 million miles tilted towards the sun. But now the North Pole is in England on the south coast at Hearn Bay. If the tilt is the same angle, then the heat from the sun come January, when the distance is reduced to 92 million miles, then North America, China, India and Europe will face unbearable heat and loss of life. So the tilt change could continue for five months, causing devastation. But a new heaven is predicted. A new earth and a new heaven is predicted to occur. The North Star has always been above the Northern Hemisphere. Ancient times navigators used it to sail back to England. Sailing south, the star became lower in the sky until past Morocco. And it was on the horizon and further south it was below the horizon. This June the 5th, 2013, the new axis of the Earth has settled down over Hearn Bay. The problem the Earth faces is prophecy. The world rejects the Lord in his second coming, even though the Pope Benedict XVI has written and announced in an apostolic letter for the Christian world, and he is in prison in the Vatican because of it. Even he said to me Hitler was the devil. He is swallowing the propaganda since his family, it was reported, listened to the BBC during World War II. Today's Vatican and worldwide Christianity would certainly have been the enemies of Hitler, as were those in the SS committing atrocities he condemned. Christianity was fitting to be what I would regard as my people. That is the Christianity of Germany. Before, yes. before Well, before the... Um, Yes, Hitler's Christianity. He, he was the one that was objecting. He recognised that all the immoral and the perversion that was so disturbing. Was mm. Yeah. His enemies, all deliberate. So the goal is the enemies of Hitler and Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall, the Christ, every single one of them, to go underground where they will be entombed and all righteous beings upon the planet are to encourage them. Now here's Pinneberg. This was interesting, taken yesterday. It's one of those chants. Let's have a look to see what's happening in Pinneberg. <laughs> Since we haven't for a very long time. Germany. In Germany, north, north Germany. And uh, the date on this is the 24th of June, so it's yesterday, and uh, yeah, 
this um, this this time on this slide is 3:22 a.m. We'll go through a few. You can see in the distance there the impression, if you like, of a planet. However, the light source that's coming in from the left of the screen behaving very oddly, not like the moon at all. This is 3.52. Let's go back to that other one page. Up 3.22, so half an hour later. This is what the skies look like. This is 3.52 a.m. Now the sunrise for the day was uh, set at 4.51 according to the Sunrise Sunset websites. So it's an hour before sunrise and look what's happened. Let's go back up. 3.22 a.m. <laughs> Half an hour later. The, this Brightness actually occurred at 3.44 and it's sustained, it doesn't go away. And then the sun, what is odd about this, we'll go through it in a minute with the video itself. Yeah, so what remains where that um, orb was is like a dusk, dusky pink hue in the shape of an orb swallowed up by the brightness of the light in the sky. And there it is, there. this is 4.21, the shape of the, the orb, whatever, calling it a moon, um, is just visible now and it continues to the bottom right of the picture as you go through the frames. But still, it's half an hour away from sunrise. <laughs> which which is occurring in the West on this. <laughs> the same place that it's setting, it's supposed to be rising. <sighs> All right. So what we have so far, there's a bright light, bright object low on the horizon that appears to be the moon, but then vanishes, leaving a pink hue. It's my opinion that it was not the moon at all. Rather, it is the new dwarf sun that has a light we humans cannot see, but animals can. However, when the angle of light is passing through the long distances of the horizon, the light reaches a critical angle to suddenly fall into our visible spectrum. The Earth rotates towards the light source, shortening the magnified wavelength, and it vanishes. The light appears at 3.44 a.m., then it glows brighter and brighter remains. Then the sun rises an hour and seven minutes later at its first appearance. This is why we observe two light sources driving through Europe, casting shadows on either side of vehicles at sunset. While we are in Glastonbury, the light was coming from all sides and we took several shots with no shadows. Then at sunset it suddenly darkened as if the light of another sun was setting and then was followed by another brightening at the same angle as we see over Pinneberg, a second sun giving light at the long atmospheric disturbance to then set looking like it was a second and appears a normal sunset. It is the angle of the atmosphere the light passes through being several times longer from the horizon than directly overhead. The length the light travels through the atmosphere causes the invisible sun to hit the distance where the light wavelength alters to our vision. If we now invert the pictures, we see that the light of the sky becomes totally black. The two slides are 3.52 a.m., yet light at 3.22 a.m. So 3.22 a.m. is the top one, and you can see the orb, and the background is a, a darkened sky, although it's getting lighter and lighter, and then there's the, the um, impression of a planet in the 12 o'clock position there. And then watch what happens. Oops, back up. The bottom left is uh, 3.52 a.m., half an hour later, and the inverted picture on the right. And as you can see, the sky, which has now become dark, from light to dark, this is the inversion, 
and just the very, very hint of what was in the planet. Mm. And the planet itself, the one in the 12 o'clock position, cannot be seen at all. If that was so, that would be darker, there'd be a dark spot up there in there, but uh, it's not there. So here we have the first slide, light at 3.22 a.m., then at 3.52, so yeah, light being the, the orb at 3.22 and then at 3.52 it's gone. What happened? The length of atmospheric filtered the light spectrum to vanish. Why? Because the Earth axis wobble was continuing to shift the Earth axis, shortening or lengthening the light path through the atmosphere. At top, the planet is in that 12 o'clock position I was talking about before. Some will argue that this is the moon. It is not the moon. It does not suddenly reduce to a dot of light, a light source like the sun. Its light radiates in all directions. When it is filtered, the outer edges will dim and vanish, but the centre is the direct rays and is last to fade. This is what is happening to this light source. On the left, it is there later. On the right, it is gone. Still later, a small dot of light. So yes, an hour later, the brightness in the sky and it's reduced to just the, again, impression, small dot, that the light is rating out, eighteen out, in all directions. The light from a sun spreading out in all directions at the centre of the surface, basically the surface is almost flat. And as such as the object is filtered by the long atmospheric angle, only the very brightest, most direct light will be seen. And remember it is a spectrum, only visible at that length of atmospheric passage. Light from the sun spreading out in all directions at the centre of the surface facing you. The surface is almost flat. It's a repeat of the last slide. Now, no one would notice in Germany. Oh, this is disgusting. Couldn't believe it. Anna told us this. It was uh, time for masturbating their children before kindergarten. Very anti-Hitler and Jesus. That's all over that law that was passed in 2009 where the government prints booklets to be handed out to kindergarten children to take them home to their parents and its instructions to German parents on how to masturbate their children to cause them to become sexually aware at the ages of three, four, five, etc. Um, total, total, demonic. demonic. The enemies of Hitler and Jesus, all there. <laughs> and according to the devil itself, <laughs> they take the cake. Mm -hmm. about what we were talking about last night. According to the devil, the enemies of Hitler take the cake. Oh, yeah. e e e even it is dismayed. Mm -hmm. uh. But she was writing how she broke away from it. Yeah, yeah, she signed. Personally. Yeah, she signed a contract when she was twelve years old in her own blood, sold it, sold a soul to the devil, and then then she went through life, and he 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 kept up his end of the bargain, so she got everything that she contracted for, which was. Thinking about it, she, 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 she should have asked for certain other things. <laughs> anyway, bottom line is she'd figured it out. She'd figured out that this is hell and that uh, because she signed the contract on a Sabbath that uh, it wasn't valid, it was null and void because that's the uh, Anyway, bottom line is uh, in the conversation with, which she had with so the I'm devil. Like well, <laughs> but the devil, and, and she, 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 she would be classified as an enemy of Hitler. Um, the devil was amazed mm. himself, actually sickened, and, and objected to people, uh, <laughs> objected to people using his name in vain. Okay, um, so going back in time to 3.43, then one minute later, so this is between frames, just one minute later, first 
flash. Well, it just flashes on. It's like it's switched on. And the orb is gone and the sky is filled with light. And it doesn't go away. A minute before. Says Spitberg, Jimmy, see the light coming across, suddenly vanish. I'll play it again. You'll notice that as it's coming through, I'll see if I can stop it as we're progressing. It's brighter, brighter, fades, and flashes. And here we are back at Glastonbury Tor. Two lights, the first sun suddenly darkened and then moments later bright.